Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source here, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Thursday, January 30th, 2025. Let's go ahead and take a look what we're tracking here for today as we're looking at a southern tornado risk here across Louisiana. We're going to show you the latest from the Storms Prediction Center on this storm system moving across the south today. We're going to be tracking multiple snow events across the country, long range and in. And if you look at what we're seeing as far as the snow mounts, we can be talking feet of snow, especially out for the western portions of the country. We'll show you the latest projections on that. And then we're looking at uh, another polar invasion coming in. Looks like as we head toward, say, around the 9th or so, uh, we could be looking at an Arctic invasion coming into the United States. So if you thought we're done with winter just yet, especially with the warm weather coming in to begin the month, uh, don't, don't put away those jackets just yet. Now, first, I do want to thank all the new followers here on the page. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't done so just yet, let's get that meter moving. I'm trying to move up toward 5,800. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you learn on future content. And as always, please leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're seeing here on our morning picture here this morning as we got this developing storm system here. Uh, rain stretching from Texas all the way up into Missouri right now. Just bitterly cold and clear up into the northeast. Florida looking good. Not bad in the inner mountain region. Out on the west coast, we're quiet here for the moment, but we're going to start seeing a parade of storm systems start to move in here as we go for the next couple of days. So enjoy today, one last day before things really start to deteriorate there. And hopefully we get some more rains down in Los Angeles. I know we had some welcome rains over the weekend, uh, but we'll see if we get some more rains down that way when we look at the long range forecast. So here's the current conditions across the country. Again, we got the flash flood watches here from Kentucky back toward northern Texas. Some fog in Kansas, as well as down toward the south, toward Florida. A little bit of winter weather here across the uh, areas of the Intermountain region, Idaho, and into Wyoming. Also getting ready for a little winter weather there across areas of uh, New York State and Pennsylvania as well. So here's our storm system again, pretty good steady rains here coming into uh, ports of Tennessee, stretching back into Arkansas. So pretty good flooding rains there. And some pretty good heavy rains just to the east of the Dallas area. In fact, we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here. Get a little thunder with this, a little lightning in this over near Tyler, uh, Texas, over near Jacksonville, moving in there shortly. Definitely a wet and rainy commute there in the D Dallas Fort Worth area for this morning. But this will continue to move off toward the east and it'll be heading into tonight where things will get interested as far as the uh, severe weather threats concerned. So let's go ahead and look at that from the Storms Prediction Center. We're going to look at their day one outlook and we'll break down the categories here for you as you kind of see how things will progress here for today. So that slight risk is what we're looking at. That's that yellow zone. That's where the highest tornado risk is also going to be for today. But you see the marginal and the slight risk uh, covering those areas here uh, for this afternoon and going into tonight. So breaking it down by the category here, we can start to look at this as we look at the tornado threat uh, running about 5%. So that's that brown zone there, East uh, Texas and into Louisiana as we watch a squall line that's going to be kind of moving through that area there for today. Now, the hail risk is pretty low. I'm not even going to highlight that. But again, the high wind threat, that's winds over 60 miles per hour, uh, also running in that little pocket there across Louisiana and East Texas. Now, this will begin to shift off toward the east, but uh, we'll lose a little bit of its punch. So just a marginal risk for severe weather here across portions of southern Alabama, southwest Georgia, the Florida Panhandle. Uh, as we go in toward tomorrow, as this thing begins to push off toward the east. And for tomorrow, that tornado risk is running about 2% there, uh, there in that same zone where that marginal risk is. All right. So that's day three, not to worry about that. Nothing to show you there for day three. Now, as far as the excessive rainfall, we're definitely seeing that already here for this morning. You see that slight risk really kind of lining up very well with where we're seeing that heavy rain there falling across Kentucky back toward Texas. So we're seeing that here for today. Uh, for your day one for some uh, isolated flooding pockets there. Day two, this we get, kind of shifts into two little separate regions. It's like, well, basically Pennsylvania, West Virginia, a little pocket around Chicago. And then the West Coast starts to get interesting here out here as that uh, onshore flow and that storm, parade of storm system starts to move on in. Really kicks in here as we look at your day three going into this upcoming weekend uh, as we got that slight risk there for uh, some heavy rains there near San Francisco, getting over near Sacramento. Uh, looking at the heavy rains here moving there as well as we go into this upcoming weekend. I'm telling you, and, and when I show you the, the models here, some of these snow totals out there could be uh, quite impressive. So again, kind of recapping your severe weather threat for today. We're talking about Houston, Pasadena, Texas. We're talking about Lafayette, uh, Louisiana, Beaumont, Texas, and the Woodland, Techlands. Those areas all there in yellow. That's where our highest risk for severe weather will be, and that's where the storm chasers will be active again for this afternoon, kind of watching to see 
what happens with the system. Not expecting a major outbreak, but we do expect a, a handful of tornadoes possible for the system uh, for today. So let's go ahead and we're going to talk about that, breaking this down. Let's look at the high resolution model first. We're going to be looking at the short term over the next 40 hours here as we watch this. So we're going to be watching this storm system here and how it develops. And then we're going to watch how things uh, develop out here on the West Coast too over the next 40 hours as we watch uh, these two systems kind of come on in. So here goes the here comes the, the storms moving in. So as we go in toward tonight, uh, late afternoon and into tonight, that's where we'll watch and see if then these storms play bumper cars with each other. You get a squall line, you'll get some individual cells out ahead of it, and sometimes you get enough wind shear. It's all rotating around this area, this upper level low here. So there's enough uh, what we call difluence or wind shear in there that's going to cause uh, you know some p possibility of some weaker tornadoes to possibly uh, flare up there. This will move off toward the east as that low begins to kind of uh, kind of not really phased together, kind of discombobulated there a little bit as that upper low kind of lags behind. So as we go into tomorrow morning and toward the noon hour, we'll see rains increasing across Alabama and into Georgia. Look out here in the west, boy. We're talking about some major snows up there, the higher elevations and some heavy rains up and down the, the west coast there from uh, uh, Seattle heading down toward just north of San Francisco as that storm system begins to move on in. And they'll go and take the sun out for the rest of your day going throughout the day on Friday. The northeast gets into the rain. It looks like we're not going to get as much snow in on, the, on this as what was originally forecasting there. Uh, looks like the, 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 the sink of the cold air and that, uh, that moisture just not going to be there. So not much, very much there, but these snow totals out here in the Intermountain region will be pretty impressive here as we go into this upcoming weekend as this moves on out. So let's talk about that jet stream. That's that river of air that kind of drives everything here across the country here. Again, we're going to be tracking this upper level feature here. So I'll bring this forward just a little bit here. Uh, this is that upper low right here. This is what's uh, kind of dragging this weather. Uh, the main jet flows up here for right now, but we are going to see it uh, get a little more busy. We'll say that, okay, as we're going to see a, a storm system here coming into the West Coast. That's this energy here uh, coming in for this upcoming Friday. That's what's going to bring the heavy rains in there. Uh, as we go in toward a Friday and into this upcoming Saturday. System clears off the East Coast here, and again, another system kind of comes into the West Coast. A very fast pattern. Now, this going into next week, uh, with this going on, the areas here across the southern tier, they're going to really warm up nicely, briefly. Don't get used to it because the European is saying, uh, I'm not done through with winter yet. So, But for most of the first seven days, it looks like we're pretty good here. we got another storm system coming in here on the west coast again. The northwest getting hit once again with a storm system there. This flow going further south will probably help areas in southern California get uh, better chances of rain getting down there as we head through the 5th and the 6th. And then as we go further, going into the 8th and 9th, we really start seeing a, a ridge of high pressure here start to form down here toward the south. And we're going to tap some of this cold air to come in here. And we're going to look right now showing an Arctic outbreak coming in here as we head toward the 9th, 10th, and 11th. So this really kind of dives right in. And you can see the, the energy flow coming in right through there. So you see it right through here, diving down in, into the continental United States. And it looks like we'll see that, uh, that freezing line dive right back down into the deep south once again. So... Uh, folks in the south, you're going to have spring-like weather for a little bit, and then going the next week, you're going to look at winter weather coming right back at you here as we go in toward the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And then it begins to warm up after that. It looks like the cold air will kind of settle more toward the west. So as we go through the, through the 9th, 10th, and 11th, that'll be big cold shot in the east, and then it'll shift to the west, and then we'll see things begin to moderate a little bit here, especially across the southeast as we go toward the 13th and 14th. Now, again, long-range projection on this, but the models have been consistent on this uh, European showing this outbreak coming around the night. So I tend to favor it for right now. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the precipitation here as we're going to kind of track this system across the southeast. Again, not a big deal. Today is going to be the most active weather day there across Louisiana, obviously, with that. Uh, we'll get a little bit of snow up here, but not as much as what was originally looking like a couple of days ago on this. And then we'll see things really plow up. There's our first system coming in on the west coast here as we head toward Friday. And things are really going to get busy out there on the west coast with several storm systems moving on through. Now, I said we got a parade of, of weaker systems that we got to kind of watch here across the northern tier. We got some snow there. We got another system there. We got another system there. So kind of a parade of systems that will kind of keep that snow threat alive for at least the northern tier here. And the West Coast really kind of caves on. And notice that we bring some of this rain down toward the 5th, getting into Southern California. Much needed rainfall there once again. We're not done with the, with the dry uh, firefighting efforts down there in California. It is getting better, but uh, we do need to keep that rainfall coming to kind of continue to, uh, to, uh, to beat back those conditions there. Now, we go, do have another storm system here coming in across the 7th here into New England. It pushes in that cold air across the Northeast once again. we got some snows across Colorado and Nebraska going toward the 7th. 
And then we're going to watch that Arctic outbreak. That's what we're going to track here as we go in toward the night. So we're going to watch that, uh, that, weather, that uh, winter weather uh, race into the northeast once again. And that cold front drag on down. And look what happens as we head toward the uh, late in the day on the ninth. Yep, that's our freezing line way down here toward the south once again. As we get a nice little polar invasion once again uh, coming in across the area. You can see it very well here as it looks like we get a little bit of chunk of the polar vortex right there. There it is right there. Boom. Uh, coming on down. We've seen that routinely throughout the winter. And that's why I do suspect we'll see it again as we head toward the 10th with that cold shot coming on down here with below zero temperatures there across the high plains. And then as we go to it'll hold there for about for about three days for the most part. And then we'll see things begin to moderate there across the south just a little bit. Starts moving back to the north here. So the, where the 540 line is kind of doing this, this number. So the cold air really starts to make out here toward the west. Starts to moderate here across the southeast as we head toward the 13th of the month. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the precipitation chances here. As far as the short term, next 72 hours is what we're looking at right here for the next three days. You can see where that rain for that, that system here is going to be going. We got the rains out here on the west coast that goes in through late in the day on your Saturday. Now, taking this out toward the 10 day total, which is where I typically like to keep it, uh, we'll show the 10 day total out here and we'll take this out to 240. You see how much the, uh, the country is going to get rain, especially the eastern half, looking pretty good there. Starting to get some rains down in Southern California. That's a good thing to see. Very heavy rains there across Northern California and staying dry across the southwest. That's been kind of a trend here for a big part of the winter. Uh, the Arizona, New Mexico has been pretty much on the dry side this winter, not getting a lot of precipitation chances out there. Now, as far as the snow chances, again, they're going to kind of come at us with these little systems. Uh, now, the next 72 hours, not a whole lot. We do get a little bit out there on the west coast. That's our first indication. You start seeing that bright white. You're starting to measure it in feet here across the west. Okay, got a little bit here across Colorado. Got a little bit up here in the northeast. But the next three days, really not looking that impressive outside of that onshore flow out on the west. Let's go take this out to 240. And it starts to get, starts to get a little more active there. That's for sure. But look at all this, folks. We're talking off the chart snows here across Oregon into, into areas of Colorado, I'm talking about Idaho in here. We're talking feet of snow, so uh, quite a bit of it. In fact, let's go ahead and highlight that. I'll go ahead and pull up that region. We'll look out the West Coast region here, and we'll take a look at that. Again, we're talking about some pretty good impressive snow mounts here. We're looking at 57 inches there, uh, 47 inches there, 25 inches there. So we're definitely talking here's 33 inches here. So uh, quite a bit of snow measured in feet as that orange shore flow gets active with a series of storms that are going to move in out there in the west and bring in some very, very heavy snows out there. It's been uh, been a little bit of a while since we've seen that, uh, probably since about early January, and we're going to start seeing that return. So let's go and talk about the temperature profile here. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at 8, 5,000 feet, a little bit easier to track that, those Arctic air masses and the warm air masses. And, and you look at what you're seeing right now. Obviously, we got above normal temperatures here across the high plains. Got that uh, lingering cold air back across the southwest thanks to that upper level low feature back there. So we're going to move this forward here and uh, looking again, the first part of February, for the most part, is going to be on the mild side. We got a cold shot here across New England uh, going this upcoming weekend. Definitely a hit and run. Uh, but for the most part, to start the month, we're going to looking pretty mild here. So going in through this weekend, the cold Arctic area, you kind of see it up here in Canada, kind of glancing blow up there. But a lot of the country, middle of the country, looking very, very warm indeed uh, as we go toward your Sunday. Now, going to next week, not looking bad there toward Monday. Definitely look at the southern tier. A lot of these southern tier places here across the deep south are going to be seeing 70s, 80s, uh, quite warm. we got some Arctic air up here across the northern plains, just a little bit. A little cold shot there across uh, areas of the northeast. That's going toward February 4th. And then, as we said, we know we got an Arctic air mass coming. We're going to get a big warm-up out ahead of it. So we got a nice cold front coming near. And this Arctic air is going to charge right on down as we head to deeper into the month. So going toward the ninth, we see this thing really start to charge down. Boom, look at all the red going away. The only thing we got the red holding on here is across California and the southwest. But some very cold air, frigid temperatures here moving across a big part of the country as we head toward the 9th of, of, of February. And that will linger a little bit uh, going in toward the 10th. Stays quite cold there into the 11th. Still staying quite cold, especially there across uh, areas of Chicago and toward Missouri. Looking very nippy indeed across the deep south. Looking very cold. Temperatures below normal. And then as we go into the end of the model run, we'll start to moderate. The 12th still looking cold. And then we'll see things begin to moderate a little bit here in the east. So things begin to moderate here toward the 13th. You see the eastern two-thirds begin to warm up. Colder out here in the west and bitterly cold Arctic air up here just over the border there in Canada. So looks like we got a big Arctic outbreak. Lasts for about three or four days and then begins to moderate a little bit as it kind of shifts out toward the west. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Client Prediction Center. I do have some disagreements with them. I do want to go ahead and show you this right now. So there's your six to 10 day outlook. I'm okay with this. Again, this is that La Nina looking pattern for sure. Cold here across the Northwest and the High Plains, very warm across the, across most of the South. That's going from the fourth to the eighth. Lowing out further, the sixth to the 12th, this is where I disagree with, with them a little bit because right now the European has been pretty consistent with this ninth, 10th, 11th, showing an Arctic outbreak coming here across the East. So we'll see if the midday run shows this and see if they adjust this uh going into later today this should typically is put out between three and four o'clock in the afternoon we'll see if this changes in here I, I suspect it probably will as far as the precipitation outlook again definitely a much more progressive pattern here across the country except for the southwest as we showed you got that big bullseye of dry weather down there across arizona new mexico and texas and that'll continue there to the 6th to the 12th. Again, most of the country here looking at uh, a little more progressive weather pattern and better chances for rain here, especially across the Ohio River Valley here, going from the 6th to the 12th. So again, looks like we're in store for an active weather day here across the deep south. You guys down there in Louisiana, make sure you stay weather aware. Make sure you get your weather apps on. Make sure you get your weather radios to go, ready to go for today. Uh, for the potential for severe weather. Not looking at a, a super big outbreak here, but again, the possibility is there for a handful of tornadoes uh, for uh, this afternoon. Then we're gonna watch a nice warm up. They're gonna be a, a, a fall spring for a lot of folks across the deep south before we get that uh, next big Arctic outbreak. We're still got February, folks. So anybody thinking, oh, we're done with winter? Uh, no, not quite. I would not raise that red flag just yet, uh, for sure. Anyway, that's your weather update for now. Again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, uh, personal invitation to you. If you want to please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It'd be an honor and privilege to have you on board here. Going to go through a little bit of a format change here pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to be working on that today. This presentation style is going to change a little bit, maybe starting tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to kind of uh, adjust things a little bit to see if it helps, uh, helps kind of add additional viewers here to the channel. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. All right. You guys take it easy. Be good, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next update. Until then, have a good day. Bye, guys.